What are you doing, Nicole? What are you doing? American doing? cocktails. One hundred years of American cocktails. Part two. So sixties, seventies, eighties, nineties, and two thousands. I feel like yeah. a cosmopolitan cup is very like Carrie Bradshaw esque, which is very of the noughties. We won't be doing martinis and all them. Forget about. No, 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 no. Forget about. No, none of the silly ones. Goodness, I don't know now. Oh, ooh, it's red. Okay, it's red. This is a 1960s cocktail, the Mai Tai. Oh, okay. I don't think the Mai Tai has the staying power. I don't think it's as popular now as it would have been in the past. Yeah, the like... 1960s cocktail experience, more preference changes as people began to prefer sweet and fruity drinks. Yeah. The cocktail is a signature example of this change reaching a popularity peak in the 1960s. Popularity surged when it was added to many restaurant and bar menus. It was also heavily featured in the 1961 film, Blue Hawaii, which starred Elvis Presley Increasing the drink's image frequency. Oh, okay. We'll get a little match oh. going on. <laughs> <laughs> Smells like petrol, honey. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're like French Elvis. <laughs> I am Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a oh, 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 cabana oh, love. <laughs> you ain't nothing but a hound dog. <laughs> dog. <laughs> you ain't a hound dog. It's going to be a new career for you. <laughs> I could be the original French Elvis. I am the <laughs> Elvis. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh, mama. Mm. Oh, mama. Lovely. It's a real classic. That's lovely. Yeah. It's more tart than sweet. Mm. This is a summer drink. That's a that's a, a a cheeky drink by the swimming pool. Doesn't even taste alcoholic. No, it's it's really nice. It tastes like a really good Gatorade. Mm. Very easy to drink. Yeah, very easy. God, to drink. that goes down easy. Yeah. You can have grenadine in Shirley Temple. Shirley Temple, yeah. Oh my God, we're gonna have a Shirley Temple. Well, this is close enough to a Shirley Temple. It's got rum in two rums in it. Dark and kind of Shirley Temple I like. <laughs> It's a classier way of kind of ordering a Long Island iced tea. You know no, what I mean? It's got no. enough. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. <laughs> what? Long Island iced tea is the most extreme cocktail out there. I love it. It's my favorite cocktail ever. Is you still having a Mai Tai anytime soon? I could. I would. Oh, I they... would. I've never, yeah, I've never had one. So um... It reminds me of the sort of drink you drink out of buckets in Thailand. Final thoughts on the Mai Tai? Hey, that's Mai Tai. My final thoughts? <laughs> Oh, oh, is this the 1970s? I'm going to guess that it's a Harvey Wallbanger. It's a Harvey Wallbanger. Harvey, Harvey Wallbanger. Wall I've heard the name, but I don't know what's in it. I've never seen one in my life. Harvey Wallbanger, Galliano, Wall orange juice, and something else. I've never heard of that before. What the hell is that? I used to have a t-shirt that had the man on it that says, and he's wearing like a little sandwich board. It's like, hi, I'm Harvey Wallbanger. This is how you make Harvey Wallbanger. And it's like, I don't know how my family had that shirt. We had it for decades. The 1970s saw more inventive and flavorful cocktails. Mm -hmm. I don't think this makes this trend more than the Harvey Wallbang. This cocktail consists of vodka, orange juice, and liqueur. It rose to popularity in the 1970s as a variation to the screwdriver, another classic cocktail. Very mm. similar to a screwdriver. So who's Harvey Wallbanger? I think people came up with a name. Who's I Harvey? Why is he banging person? that wall? According to mixology and mythology, this classic was named after a surfer in the 1950s. <laughs> after losing out in a surfing competition in California, the saddened surfer, Tom Harvey, swung by a bar he often frequented and ordered his favorite mixed drink. Hmm. Oh, okay. It just tastes like orange juice. Oh, it's um, a bit boring. I'm not mad at it though. It's a very unassuming drink. Too boring to be offensive. Is that fair? That's I love. That's such an offensive remark, and I love that. I love to use. You're too boring to be offensive. Like, is it a banging your walls? It's not banging my walls. It's not even knocking on my walls. It's, it's kind not of boring. Even, it's not even tip tip tapping on the walls. It's a very refreshing drink. Yeah, like on a hot sunny day, this would go down so well. But yeah. as far as cocktails go, it's subpar. Step up or down for the mai tai. Down. Indeed, I prefer the mai, mai tai. Harvey, bang harder. It feels like a breakfast cocktail. <laughs> Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know the way you have um, champagne and orange juice? The mimosa. Mimosas, yeah. It feels like a very mimosa-esque cocktail. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Well, that was the first time I tried a glassy cherry, so there you go. I make it sound like I just eat nothing but like <laughs> gruel and water all day, which I do. Is it a... Pineapple? Is it... Pina, pina coladas? Getting caught in the rain. Boom. 
boom, boom. The pina colada is one of the most famous 1980s cocktails and worldwide drinks. It's really good. It grew particularly pina famous. Pina colada. Grew particularly famous in the United States in the 1980s, shortly after Rupert Holmes' song hmm. "Escape," the pina colada song was released in 1979. The yeah, iconic drink originated in Puerto Rico in a hotel bar in 1954. And many people associate the sweet drink with beach lounging and lively nights. Mm. Yeah, I got that. Hot summer nights on a beach. A song about wanting to cheat on your lover, going to cheat on them, and then it's your lover that you're going to cheat on your lover with. Oh, no this greater is... person to cheat on your wife with than... Your wife. <laughs> Hell yeah, I'll drink to that. If you lack pina coladas... And Man getting caught in the rain. rain. Okay, we got that out of our system. We did. Put it back into our system now. Hey. Cheers. It's like a smoothie for grown-ups. Mm. Oh my goodness. Mmm. Mm. Oh, foamy. I don't like coconut. Mmm. How does one not like coconut? It tastes, How does, like, you know, it tastes like holidays. It tastes like a holiday I don't want to be on. Cheers. Foamy, creamy, alcoholy. That is fantastic. That. That's a dessert. That's a treat. I just don't care for it. It's just like it's like the mushroom of fruit, you know? No! I feel like the glass is wrong. That poor glass. It did nothing wrong. It just, it exists. It does make you feel like you're on holiday. Mm. You're like, who am I to be having this on a Tuesday evening? When it's lashing rain outside. Yeah, and I'm yeah. in Ireland. <laughs> yeah. So, Dara, you don't like pina coladas. This is my first pina colada. It's fine. I just don't like coconut. I'm sorry. What about getting caught in the rain? <laughs> Not a fan of that either. Not a no fun. <laughs> Make a love at midnight? God, no. Ugh. <laughs> Too late. Too late. I need to be asleep <laughs> by 10. Oh. What, what have we got? Is, I it think I... Is this a Long Island iced tea? Is it... Did you do you do me? Did you do me? The decade is the 1990s, and the most popular cocktail was the Long Island iced tea. Oh. Oh. Yay! The Long Island iced tea surged in popularity in the 1990s, reflecting another difference in preferences. This cocktail features five different types of liquor, giving it a higher alcohol concentration than many other cocktails. Long Island iced tea has two competing origin stories, one in the 1920s in Long Island, Tennessee, and the other in Long Island, New York in 1972. No matter which story people preferred, Long Island iced tea was an extremely popular 1990s cocktail. You know, I feel like I've just won an Oscar or something. This is, this is for me. I have had a Long Island iced tea on Long Island. Have you? Yes. Nice. Yes, it tasted like every other Long Island iced tea that I had anywhere else in the world. Whoa. <laughs> but the thing is, it's so tasty. It is, it's very nice. I like the, the, the clash of flavors. Um, Something going on, you know? It's very nice, actually. It is. Yeah, we'll have 12 more. It is very, very pleasant to drink. It's very, it's surprisingly smooth. Mm -hmm. It's It's got a kick to it, but it's got that kind of sour, <laughs> sugary edge to it that yeah. stops you from oh my God. <laughs> thinking Ooh. too hard about the fact that you're drinking five spirits at once. Yeah, I don't really care, care, care for Coke, cola flavor. Full stop. Hey, yeah, I'm a Fanta guy. Uh, yeah, a cola for me, just don't, I don't care for as a flavor. I know red flag. I know, I know, but like it, it is. This is the most alcoholic Long Island I've ever had because normally when you have a Long Island, you're like that tastes like Coke. There's no like alcoholic, and that's how they're so dangerous because yeah. you keep ordering them, and then suddenly you are thrown into a back of a taxi, and then everyone hates you. Yeah, you know, you can really tell a person, you know, if they order Long Island iced tea. So I'm like, oh, you're, you're you're my type of person. You're on a very specific buzz right now, and I appreciate it. <laughs> Very specific journey that night. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. It'd have to be, I'd say, cola to make a nice Long Island iced tea. Would it? Does it have to be? Uh... I, think it, I think generally it is cola, yeah. Okay. Oh, you want to do it with Fanta? You big weirdo. Oh, no. Yeah, or Sprite or gruel. You know, I don't know, whatever you have <laughs> left over, but milk. Look, ugh, no. Actually, but... milk, I really like white Russian. This feel particularly 1990s? With every sip, I feel like I'm watching Star Trek The Next Generation while the... X-Files is on another TV and Nirvana is playing and Bill Clinton is being impeached. That's what it feels like. Oh, I know what this one is. It's halfway across the room and I know is, what it is. Is, is this the Carrie Bradshaw special? Yeah. <laughs> 
Do, 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 do. This is oh. the 2000s most popular cocktail. Cosmo. Cosmo. Yeah. Is it because of Sex in the City? Why am I so pleased? What's the Sex in the City? Get, was the 90s. I need to get out. Well, <laughs> Pink Cosmopolitan is a prime example of a 2000s cocktail. It peaked in popularity in the late 1990s and early 2000s. Its sweet and slightly tart taste appeals to many people, while the pink hue gives the cocktail a unique appearance. It was significantly featured in the hit TV show Sex in the City which encouraged even more people to order the iconic drink. I used to order this in bars when I first started going to them and I feel real fancy. Who are you in Sex in the City? Oh, I'm I'm very much uh, Samantha. Are you a Carrie or a Samantha or a Miranda or a Charlotte? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Gunther. <laughs> That's from a different show. <laughs> cheers. Well, cheers to you guessing this correctly. Well, you also guessed the late 90s, so. Nice. Nice and light. But that is delicious. Any particular reason why there's the open? Or... No, it's just what it's served in. Very impractical glass, actually, because mm. it's like a champagne coupe, which I really like the look of and I have in my house, and they're so impractical to drink out of, it just spills everywhere. Because of the big slice of orange in this, there is a taste of orange, and it tastes more like what I would want the Harvey Wallbanger to taste like. With flavour. With flavour, yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that would have been nice. Harvey Wallbanger, now with flavour. <laughs> Delicious. I do feel like a fancy New York gal drinking this mm -hmm. stuff. You? I feel like going to the Magnolia Bakery, popping off over to Mr. Big's mm. house, gonna buy some Manolo Blahnik shoes and some <laughs> other brands along the way. I think it's beautiful. I used to really enjoy drinking these back in the day. I don't know why I stopped. I like the little tart aftertaste you have It's to also it. not obnoxious. They look kind of obnoxiously sweet, I would say, but they're not. Mm. They, they're, they're on the sweeter. They're definitely a sweeter cocktail, but they're not sickeningly sweet. Oh, There's nice. also, you can't go wrong in a martini glass. It just... Just elevates any drink. You can go very wrong on a martini glass. There's something about drinking drinks out of this glass. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. It's just you could just absolutely knock it back. If yeah. You really wanted to. Do you see yourself having a cosmo in the future? Hell yeah. I definitely. I've had many in the past, and I think I'm gonna go back to them. I'm gonna start them. I remember there were friends of mine who were upset when Sex and the City ended. There is a whole generation of women who were raised on it and have been inspired by it. Being what boss bitches. Yeah, being like New York killers. Mm. Does it feel 2000s? It does. It, it feels does. very Y2K, doesn't it? It feels the most fitting with its decade. Yeah. Out of all. If of you had to put a decade and a date on any of the cocktails, you'd slot this into the 2000s, definitely. Yeah. Well, a selection of America's favorite cocktails. What do you think of all? I was getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> If you let me, if let me finish going, I was getting there. I Beautiful. think I love cocktails. Oh, cocktails are life. I cocktails cocktail. are the best. They're the best. They really are. They're just, you know, when you order a cocktail and then it arrives and you're like, oh my God, it's like uh, a work of art and a drink. Well, I think there was a great variety. I liked to kind of see where the flavors went. A lot of sweetness. A lot of sweetness. Yeah, actually. I was expecting a little bit more like, because this, that was the entirety of the Cold War. Where was the misery? But look, <laughs> I think this is the distraction from the misery. Thanks for watching, guys. We do new videos every month. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. If you want to have a bit more entertainment and have something to brighten up your day, why not check out a playlist or hit the bell or leave a comment, you know? Leave a comment. Tell us which Sex and City girl are you. Yeah. And if you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, <laughs> see you next time. Bye. Bye.